And if you'd have walked into my high school classroom and said, okay, which one of these people is going to rap on a song with 50 Cent and Eminem in 10 years' time, you would not point at me. I'd grown up with rock stars. I'd grown up listening to Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton and Guns N' Roses and, and all these people. So I always thought you had to get a band and form a band and go and play. But uh, seeing Damien Rice was the first time I was like, oh, I can do that on my own. So I went home and wrote my first song that day. I tried to form a band. Actually, the band that I was in very briefly are still two of my best friends. One of them actually was on tour with me for the last two years of Divide. I moved to London alone at 17 and um, you, I was kind of a big fish in a small pond in my hometown because it was so small. So I would play a show and people would come to it and I was like the one guy with an acoustic guitar and there was sort of bands about and stuff. But when I went to London, it was a real wake up call. There was a lot of, um, a lot of singer songwriters trying to do the same thing who were older than me, better than me, better songs, more experience. Um, and I just had to catch up. My best memory of that time, probably the people that I met while doing it. I'm still in touch with quite a lot of them. Um, yeah, I still like see them all the time. I'm the godfather of one of their kids. And yeah, I think it was just, it was a nice little community. Everyone was sort of rooted for each other, which was nice. It was good. I'd made it, there was a local school nearby uh, that a guy had a studio and um, I managed to get some studio time there was for, for a day. So I went in for a day, recorded all of them and sort of put my bits and bobs on it. I didn't know what I was doing and it doesn't sound great, but um, it, yeah, it's the start. I'm not like embarrassed by it, but I don't, I'm not going to choose to listen to it. Whereas I would choose to listen to Plus if I wanted to. Um, but I think it shows... It's a good tool to show kids and be like, look, you can start and not really have any talent at all and work at it and then achieve something. He's from his place in America, which is not New York and it's not Los Angeles. It's not like it's not the spot. It's he, he is the guy from his city. And I feel like from my county, that's the same thing for me. So little in common, but so much in common, if that makes sense. I think we represent where we're from proudly. Proudly. A lot of people look at where I'm from and sort of sneer and laugh and, you know, they think we've got a bad football team and we're all farmers and blah, blah, blah. But I, I'm so proud of where, where I'm from and I want to, I want to represent it around, around the world. And it's the first, when people say, where are you from? I would never be like London. I'd be like, I'm from three hours from London, a place called Suffolk. It's beautiful. Go there. When I was younger, I always said, I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do two songs with Eminem. I'm going to do one where I sing on the chorus. I'm going to do one where I rap. And everyone, everyone's like, no, you're not. That's never going to happen. And I remember being in, in high school, obsessed with Eminem and 50 Cent. And if you'd have seen me in high school, I was like ginger hair, glasses. I had a stutter. I was a bit of a weird kid. And if you'd have walked into my high school classroom and said, OK, which one of these people is going to rap on a song with 50 Cent and Eminem in 10 years time, you would not point at me. And I just like the fact that there's a white British kid from a farming town in Suffolk that is rapping on a song with 50 Cent and, and Eminem. I'd, I, just, I just find that funny. I just find it funny. You know, I didn't grow up rich, but we had a very nice area that we lived in. Like, the, I lived in a farming town. So there's poverty in my town, and there's different levels of stuff, but I, you would never see real, real, like, addiction and uh, just... People with no hope, I guess. And going, I was 18 and I went into this homeless shelter at Christmas and I'd just never seen anything like it. And the conversations I had with people, I'd never spoken to anyone and had a conversation like that. It was a very eye-opening thing for me. And since I've traveled the world, obviously you see way, way more of it. But coming from like a really sheltered town of 2,000 people in the middle of the countryside in, in England, it just wasn't something that I'd ever experienced. When I was on stage, I went to play with the Rolling Stones and it was in a period of my life where things were just happening and happening and happening and happening. I would, one, one week I was singing with Beyonce, the next week I was doing a song with Stevie Wonder, the next week things were just happening and I didn't take anything in. I was just, I would just go and do something and then move on to the next thing. But I remember being on stage with the Rolling Stones um, singing Beast of Burden in um, 
San Francisco, no, Kansas. I was in Kansas. And there was a catwalk. And I walk up the catwalk with Mick Jagger and I'm, I'm on my guitar and he's kind of singing like this. And I remember looking, remember in my head, just sort of snapping out of it and looking at Mick Jagger and being like, hang on. And then looking back at the stage and seeing the Rolling Stones on stage and being like, this is weird. Like, this is really weird. <laughs>